Yes. We are going to work with with complex numbers. And uh, and I kind of stole some of this from the book and then I put in some of my own examples and I put in questions that you have to answer. And uh, I don't know if I'll always use the book ones because it's kind of sometimes too, informa too much information. But I, I cut out some stuff and I left in some stuff. So this is what you're going to learn how to do. You don't have to write all that down, OK? You're going to learn how to uh, write stuff with imaginary unit i. Add and subtract and multiply complex numbers. And use complex uh, conjugates to write the quotient to complex numbers. And find the complex uh, solution to quadratic equations. Okay, you don't have to write that down or anything. Okay, The imaginary unit i. Okay, Most of you know that. Um, that i is the square root of negative 1. Most of you know that? Who knows that? Kind of knew that. Okay. And, uh, and um, the reason that they, they had to come up with imaginary numbers, they said, well, because uh, sometimes it's the answer to an equation and we don't have a way to express that answer other than it's square root of negative 1. And you say, well, if it's imaginary, what's the use of it and stuff like that? But it does, as we saw, it can correspond to um, you can graph imaginary numbers. You can do operations on imaginary numbers. You can use calculus to figure out things with imaginary numbers. Um, I heard a thing on NPR one time about um, how they use imaginary numbers in, in modeling, uh, what do you call it, aerodynamics and all that kind of stuff. So it, just because they're imaginary numbers doesn't mean that they can't have like uh, real applications and things like that. Sorry, I went back way too far, so I'm going back. Um, so, uh, and the other thing with the imaginary numbers, for instance, say you have the number, so i is equal to the square root of negative 1. I'm going to start a new page. Um, so i is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared, what's i squared equal to? That's equal to plain old negative 1, okay? I cubed, anyone know what that's equal to? Negative, negative I, okay? It's negative I because I cubed is I squared times I, right? So if I take I, multiply negative one, I get negative I. What's I to the fourth? Uh, Positive one, right? Because right, because i to the fourth can be written as i squared times i squared, and so i squared times i squared is negative one times negative one, which is plain old one. So even though you're multiplying imaginary numbers, you can have real numbers as your answer. What would i to the fifth be, just for kicks? I to the fifth. Um. It would be the same as i, and then this pattern repeats itself every four. To that, so then it would, so i to the six would be negative one, i to the seventh. So if they said, what's i to the 373 power, could you do that? Take a while. Okay, no, it doesn't have to take a while because this pattern repeats itself every four. Okay? So how many times does four go into 373? This is the way you would do it. How many times does four go into 373? Nine times, right? And one, nine times, what goes, how many times is four going to 13? Uh, three. What's your remainder? Two, five, one, two, five. Or, well, if I, three times four is 12, right? Remainder one, right? So at that, it would go evenly into 372, which means I would go through this cycle, I'd go around this cycle 93 times, and plus one, so i to 373 power would be exactly the same as i. Do you see how I did that? Okay. I go, I see how many times does a cycle go through, and then I go that the remainder is how many where it ends up, you know, starting with i and so, yeah? No, so you can do that. Um, I'm not sure if you have some in your homework like that, but that's a good thing to know how to do. So i squared is negative 1 and so on. Um, so then each complex number can be written in the standard form. A complex number, okay, it has a real part, 
and an imaginary part. In the standard form, a plus bi, so this is standard form of a complex number, a is called the real part, and bi is called the imaginary part, where b is a real number, and, uh, and, um, and the i part is a complex number. Okay, so square root of 9 minus 5 can be written as negative 5. This is the real part. And 3i is the imaginary part because you can pull out a square root of negative 1 here and turn this into a uh, square root of i. What's this? From the library. From the library. Thank you. Ken. Give me books for to read. I don't have time to read books. Book lady. The 100 year old man. The boys on the boat. I've read that all. That's a good book. Is anyone? Oh, wait. <laughs> Sorry. I have to pause. How do you pause this? Where'd it go? Um, I'm going to go back to start recording. Where was I? before I was so brutally interrupted. Um, let's get rid of this. Let's go back to uh, go back to here. So we'll talk more about this in a second. Okay? If A and B are real numbers, then A plus B I is a complex number and is said to be written in standard form. If B equals 0, then the number A plus B I equals A is a real number. Okay? And if uh, B is not equal to 0, it's called an imaginary number. Okay? And so a number of the form bi, where b is not equal to zero, is called a pure imaginary number. For example, I know that's kind of uh, kind of weird, but if you write three, okay, three is a complex number, right? Three is a complex number, but it is in its i part is zero, okay? If you have the number two i, that's a complex number as well. But that's missing, whoops, that doesn't have a real part to it, okay? So it, it's 0 plus 2i. Would be, so these are both complex numbers, but when we write 3, usually we just write 3. And when we write 2i, usually we just write 2i. But they do have a, a real part in this case, imaginary part in this case, that aren't there, okay, or that you're not seeing. All right, so next, then it talks about sets and subsets. So all real numbers and all imaginary numbers are complex numbers, okay? So the big, the, if you're doing a Venn diagram, these both fit into complex numbers. Oh my God, you understand that? Easy? All right, so, um, so now, two complex numbers, A plus B, written in center, are equal to each other if a plus bi is equal to c plus di if and only if this number is equal to this number and the number in front of the i is equal to the number in front of the i and the other number. So for example, um, op so did I go too fast on that one? Yes? Okay. You don't have to write all this stuff down. It, it, it's, it'll be pretty self-explanatory as we go through it. But all this means is they're equal if this part and this part are equal. We're going to move on. Operations with complex numbers. What the heck? So all this says, if I want to add two complex numbers, I add their real parts. So in this complex number, I'll show you with a real example in a second. But if I add the real parts, A plus C and B plus D, to get the, the result. And the difference, I would do it the same way. A minus C. B minus C would give you that. So for example, let's just do a quick, uh, do I have an example on the next page? No, let's go back, let's do an example, okay? So say I wanted to add um, three minus two I plus four, uh, and let's put it in parentheses, four minus six I. What would that be equal to? I'm not gonna have you do that clicker thing on this. We will, we'll get to somewhere you actually have to do it. Who can tell me what this would be? Just add the real parts together. So what? Seven minus eight. Seven minus eight. Questions about that? That's all this is saying. Okay, is you, you just add together the real parts and you add together the imaginary parts. 
Okay. All right. So uh, next up, they talk about operations with complex numbers. Um, so an added I additive identity is when you add the opposite. Okay. So the additive inverse of a plus bi is negative a plus bi. So for example, if I were to take 3 minus 5i and add that with its additive inverse, what would be the additive inverse of 3 minus 5i? Negative 3 plus, negative three plus 5i, <coughs> right? What would I end up with? Right, this 3 minus 3 goes away, and negative 5i plus 5i, and I would get out 0, okay? So that's the additive inverse, and I think use letters. It's always nice to have a nice concrete example, right? Okay. Can I go on? Not yet. And I posted this already on my website, so you could see my notes and stuff. Um, and the PowerPoint. The additive identity in the comment is zero, the same as a real number. Furthermore, the additive inverse, I just talked about that. Oh. So let's see if you, so here's one where you get to try combining, uh, combining um, complex numbers. So I'm going to hit start, and you guys can try to do this one and see if you could come up with the right answer. Does it come up on your screen? Is anyone having problems? You just go put down what your answer is. You're getting that on your phone, Jason? This is a great thing. I feel bad for Devin because he can't log in. Let me try again, Devin. I'm going to try to fix you. Uh, I wonder if I could do it while you guys are working. Yes. What? It's not working? Oh, the other thing, when you're typing it in, uh, type it in, there's no numbers or anything, just type in five, or sorry, type in the answer, which is something plus something I, okay, or something minus something I, and don't put any spaces, because the way I put it in to my answers, that's how it's formatted. So one person answered, they didn't get it right yet, though. So. So you can't have any spaces when you put in your answer. Those of you who are putting it in. Maybe I put it in wrong. Did I get it wrong? No. I got it right. Um, did I get it wrong? Oh. Oh. I have the wrong answer in there. How about I get the wrong answer? I'm going to change my answer. It's OK. I could do that. Um, Oh, now lots of people are getting it right now that I fixed the answer. Okay. Just, just yeah, we're fine. Okay. Yeah. The purple folders my students yeah. just integrated, are they in those rooms? Like, um, they must be. Okay. Yeah, it is back here. Okay, so uh, are you guys doing that? Did you do that? Only uh, 26 people have entered it. 44% of you got it right. 42 for whoever just put it in the guy around. Um, I don't know. I can't even tell who's put it in yet. Did Results. I? Did you? Yeah. Um, let me see. I can't tell you if you got it right or not. But I, oh, you wrote, you don't have to write a zero before it, those of you put in a zero. You you take away the constant in front. Well, does if that you, make it wrong? Yeah, they don't make it wrong. It wouldn't be wrong on a test, but in this case, since it's formatted exactly, um, Okay, you don't need to put a zero in front. Okay, are we in? Everyone's done? Yes? Okay, 
So I'm going to hit question. It's going to tell you whether you got it right or wrong. And uh, the answer should just be negative 2i. Yes? Negative 2i, right? Because if I were doing this out, um, yeah, so you want me to do it? 3 minus negative 2 makes 5. And 5 plus negative 5 gives you 0, right? And negative 3i plus positive i gives you negative 2i. So, okay, you want me to do it? Uh, okay, so, uh, so you would combine these like terms. This would give you 5, right? 5 minus 3i plus negative 5 plus i. And then it's just like combining like terms. 5 plus negative 5 goes away. And negative 3i plus i makes negative 2i. And you don't write the 0 part, even though there is a 0 part there. You don't see it. OK? Oh, that's, no, that means, where do you think it was multiplication? No, because it would yeah, be, there'd be parentheses in it. Not multiplying. OK, so there you go. Um, moving on to uh, my community lab associative complex number that just going to kind of take you through. And you're going to go, what the heck are they? They like to do letters, OK? Um, but letters can confuse you. But what this is saying is just as if you were foiling two polynomials, you do it the same way. In this case, what they do is they distribute through A times C plus DI. And then they multiply through b times c plus 2, bi times c plus 2i. If they were multiplying two complex numbers, and then they distribute here a times c and a times di, right? And, uh, and then you distribute through here bd times i squared. And the reason they did that is because i squared turns into negative 1. And you combine your i terms, and then you combine your uh, your imaginary terms and you combine your real terms, you end up with a, with a uh, complex number. But I'm going to give you a better example than that because it's just letters. But basically, you just do FOIL, OK? Um, do you want me to do this one? I think you guys could do this, OK? Um, so what you're going to do is multiply these two things and FOIL it, right? So you're going to multiply first, first, outer, inner, last, and then simplify, and then see what you come up with, OK? Go ahead, give that a shot, OK? Mr. Leader, first, uh, yes. for the last problem, it wouldn't let me submit. Uh-oh. Sometimes you have to log out and then log back in. All right. I know it'll take OK? Or did I stop it before? No, I submitted. Uh, yeah, sometimes if it won't submit, then you have to log out and then log back in, OK? Don't worry about it. We're still in the. Learning pro oh, I didn't hit your, uh, where's question two? Start. Is this question two? I guess it's question two. Did it show up? Yeah. OK, and I know what the answer is. Um, the answer is, ooh, ooh, you guys are going fast here. 83% of you seven people have gotten it right. Oh, 88% have gotten it right. This is exciting. I have to pause my thing, otherwise I'll uh, be recording my, myself. The video audience out there, um, the answer was 13. And uh, the way you would do that, I'm just going to take you through it. Because notice that if I FOIL this, the first term gives you 9, right? The two outer terms gives you negative 6i. The two inner terms give you plus 6i. And the two last terms give you negative 2i squared, right? What's i squared equal to? Negative 4i squared, right? That's what I meant, OK? Negative 4i squared. And i squared is what? Negative 1. So this makes this goes to negative, 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 negative one, right? Ne negative, <laughs> negative, negative, negative one, negative four, sorry, which gives you 13, okay? So 
This is an interesting uh, thing. These are called conjugates of each other. And whenever you multiply the complex conjugates together, these are called complex. They're going to have a slide on that, but I might as well teach you it, teach you it right here. These are called con complex conjugates. When the only thing that changes with a complex conjugate is they're exactly the same, but one of them is positive, one of them is negative. And when you multiply complex conjugates together, you get a real number, okay? Which is really nice. Now there's a shortcut. Does anyone see a shortcut I could have done instead of foiling and combining my terms? What's the shortcut I could have done without ever either even having to do all that foiling? What's three squared? What's two squared? What's nine plus four? Thirteen. Okay? That's all you have to do. If you have something that looks like this, just square this, square this, and add them together. Okay? So if I did five, five plus seven i times five minus seven i, what would be my answer? You don't have to do the middle part, just add them together. What's that, 74? That's all you have to do, okay? You square the first, the first coefficient, you square the second coefficient, and you'll get that answer, okay? All right, um, so next one, let's try this. And this doesn't have, this one doesn't come out to be a, uh, a real number, because it's not three plus two i times three minus two i. So let's hit this one and see what you get, okay? So write your answer. When you write your answer, write it without any spaces, Mary. Um, what are you watching that's so much fun over there? Okay. Um, so when you write your answer, write it in the form. Um, don't put any spaces. So if you write your answer as 5 plus 2i, leave it as... Uh, no spaces between the 5 and the i, okay? Whoops. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to pause this thing. That's what I'm trying to do. So the answer to this, for those of you we're watching at home are <laughs> is, uh, is um, 5 plus 12i, right? 5 plus 12i. Okay? So um, moving on, and uh, I think we already, complex conjugates, I already talked about that, so I'm not going to talk about it again. But basically what it says is that if you multiply two things that are op complex conjugates, all you have, really have to do is square this and square this and add them together, which is kind of the shortcut that I just told you, okay? Multiply this by its complex conjugate. If I did, what would I get out? What would be my answer? I'm not going to make you do this. What, what, would, what would I get out? I'd multiply 3 minus 5i times what? 3 plus 5i, and what would be my answer to that? 34, right? Because it's just 9, 3 squared plus 5 squared. Give it 34. I don't need to go through. All right. So uh, do, not, do not have to change your 3 to negative 3. No, no because no, the, the, the because only thing that changes is a sign in the middle. Okay. Um, so net, the place we use this the most is when you're trying to simplify uh, quotients that look like this. Okay? Because it's kind of like having a radical in the denominator. You don't want to have a, uh, an i in the denominator. So what you do is you multiply the top and the bottom by its complex conjugate. So you're basically multiplying by 1. So the complex conjugate in the bottom is 1 minus 3i. <coughs> and because you want to have no i's in the bottom. That's what it means by standard, standard form. Okay and 1 minus 3i on the top, because really I'm multiplying by 1. What does the bottom become? What does the bottom become? 
do that shortcut trick that I just told you. What's, what's the bottom become? What's 1 squared plus 3 squared? 10. The bottom becomes 10. All right? And then the top, you actually have to do that and simplify. So the top you FOIL, the first gives you 6. The outers give you negative 18i. The inners give you negative 2i. And the last gives you positive 6i squared. And then I simplify things, okay? Six, what's 6i squared equal to? What's that equal to? Negative six. So what's six plus negative six? Six plus negative six. That goes away, right? So I'm, I'm left, and they won't always go away on the top like that, but in this case, I end up with negative 18i minus two i, which is how many i's? Negative 20i divided by 10 is how many i's? Negative 2i. So after all that, um, by multiplying by the conjugate, I simplified this expression down to this expression. It won't always simplify that nicely, okay? But in this case, it does. All right? I'm going to give you one to practice now, I think. Okay? And I think this is the last practice problem. So write the quotient in standard form. And this one, by standard form, we want to write it in the form like... Uh, one, if the answer is one third plus two fifths i, okay, that's what I mean by writing it in standard form. So you want to break apart the fraction and write it like that. You're going to have to reduce a fraction in this one. Um, the other thing, when you put it in your calculator, put in, if I were writing this in my calculator, write it like this one third plus no spaces, and I'm going to go two divided by 5i. That's how I want you to put it in because that's how it would match my answer in the, in the calculator, okay? So, uh, so ready and uh, start. Hey, maybe I could give you a point for being the first one in with the correct answer. Oh, that'd be a good, good thing. First one in for, I right, to see the results. No, oh wait. No one's answered yet, right? Simplify your answer and put it in this form, no spaces. Okay, even though this is incorrect form, that's how I can put it into my answer key on here. So, so um, let's see. What's this book about? Oh, I have to pause for my viewing audience, which is, I think I have two followers now. Um, the answer to this one, I, I think it should have been uh, one tenth plus four fifths i. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and uh, any questions on how you do that? So you would multiply two plus three i times uh, four plus two i on the top, right? And on the bottom, you're going to have this squared plus this squared, which is twenty. So you end up getting, uh, how many i's do you end up getting? You end up getting uh, 10, right? Because it's uh, 8 minus 6 i squared. Oh, no, you get 2, right? You get 2 minus or plus 16 i, right? Divided by 20, which you can reduce to 1 tenth plus 16 over 20, which is 4 fifths i. Uh, so that's where that answer comes from. This is not the right answer. That was just you did. OK, um, I don't think I have any more that you guys are going to participate in, but I'm going to, because I because I need to talk about some more stuff, though. Can I start my video? I did. Okay. So uh, for some reason, it's not letting me move on to the next page. I have to use my mouse. It's OK. Um, so now uh, you use these imaginary numbers to find complex uh, uh, to find complex answers to <coughs> quadratic equations. So when you have something like this, i equals uh, square root of negative one, um, you can, or uh, if you have uh, square root of negative three as an answer, 
you want to factor out the real part and rewrite that as the square root of 3 times uh, square root of negative 1, which is odd. So if I have something like, uh, let's just do one like negative square root of 27i. Not 27i. Negative square root of 27. What I would want to do is something like that is pull out, I could actually factor out what, what um, perfect square is in 27. 9. So I could rewrite this as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 1, right? 9 times 3 makes 27. The reason I write it that way is because the square root of 9 is 3. Oops, square root of positive 3, right? And you leave in the square root of 3, and you call the square root of negative 1 i. So that would be 3 root of 3 i, okay? So I think we have an example on the next page. Let's see. Um, a positive number, then the principal square root of the negative number a is defined as square root of i times i. Okay? So oh, a couple more examples. Um, I want to give you guys some type of work, so I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna make you do this one. But if I have, this is important, okay? You should pay attention because I got this one wrong when I was when I was doing it. You cannot just multiply these things together. Like most square roots, you can just multiply them together, right? So what would be this negative 3 times negative 12? 36, which would give me positive 36. What's the square root of 36? 6. But you can't do that when you have imaginary numbers, because when you have imaginary numbers, things kind of change. So if you have this, okay, Notice, if I rewrite this as the square root of 3 times i, and I rewrite this as the square root of 12 times i, and then I multiply these square roots together, I end up with the square root of 36, which is 6, times the square root of i squared, which is negative 1, I end up with negative 6, see? Okay, so if you are multiplying two imaginary numbers that are inside the square root things, you cannot just multiply, you have to make, take the i's outside first and then do this. So this won't work. You cannot do it that way. Okay? Let's just simplify this one. I'm not going to make you do it. Um, how can I rewrite the square root of 48? What perfect square is in 48? 3 times something. 3 times 16. There's a 16 in there. 16 times what? 3. Alright. And what perfect, we already did this one, right? This is 3 squared of 3 i. So this is 4 root of 3 i minus 3 root of 3 i, which is how many roots of 3 i? 1. 1 root of 3 i. So if you have something like this, simplify it then. So this you can't readily add together until you find out, ah, the there's a root of 3 in both of these. So you can now subtract since they're both roots of 3. Okay. Um, last thing I think they're going to talk about here is when the reason we're learning this here is because we're learning about complex solutions to, to uh, quadratic equations. All right. So if I have something that looks like this, algebraically they, the way I would solve this is I'd say x squared is equal to what? Negative 4. Negative four okay? But um, x squared, x is therefore equal to what? Square root of two, two, four. 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which is x equals plus or minus 2i. Right? Okay? So when you're taking a square root, you can't forget that there's a plus or minus part in front of it. When you are solving quadratic equations or any kind of equation that involves complex numbers, if you have a, they always come in pairs. So, so if one answer is a 2i, you're also going to have a negative 2i. If you have a 3 plus root of 3i, you're going to have a 3 minus root of 3i. You're going to find that out tomorrow. So let's look at this one, okay? If I don't remember this, um, this does not factor, 
I don't believe. So you have to use that special formula called the what? If I'm so quadratic formula, okay? And uh, anyone remember how I would plug this into the quadratic formula? X equals what? Negative B. Negative B. So what's negative B? Negative negative two makes positive two plus or minus square root of b squared. What's b squared? Negative two squared minus four times a. What's a? Three times c. What's c? Five over the whole thing over two a. I'm going to sing the quadratic formula song over two times three in a minute. Do you know the quadratic formula? I'll play the song. You know the song? You do? The quad, that version? Quadratic formula. You know that? I'll play it for you. I have it on my computer. So x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus, what's that, 60? 12 times 5 is 60. 4 minus 60 is what? Negative 56 over 6, okay? And then you keep simplifying. X equals 2 plus or minus. There's a perfect square in 56. Anyone know what that is? I think there's a 4 in there. 4 times what gives you 56? Just 4? 4 times 4 times 14. So you could write this as 2 uh, times square root of 14 times i divided by 6. Do you guys see where I got that from? Because 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 14 makes 56, and I took out this square root of negative 1. And then I could reduce that. 2 over 6 is 1 third. 2 over 6 here is also 1 third, so I get plus or minus the uh, square root of 14 i over 3. That would be your complete, both of your complete solutions. 1 third plus square root of 14 i over 3, 1 minus square root of 13 i. Did I go too fast? No. Okay. So um, I think that's all I have for you. Thank God. Okay. Um, let's see if I got it right. Oh, my bad. They even simplified just like I did. Okay? So, uh, and there's your homework. You could start. You have half an hour. Unless someone wants to do Colorado Math League right now. Anyone? <laughs>